Because this is the 35th anniversary, I believe, of the release of At The Budokan. Um, the, well, er, early on... It was called that? Yeah. Who yeah. Was? Yeah. Oh. Actually, there's, there's an album... There's an al- one of the album sleeves, the early album sleeve, says At The Budokan. It got changed to At well, Budokan. It's probably it's like at some, Madison Square. Yeah. 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 Um, but actually, you, Tom, said something early on about Budokan... Um, as being, you know, now it's been built up in terms of its kind of prestige and what people think about it. Yeah, but, but yeah, when, yeah, good, tell, <laughs> tell the story. I mean, in terms of when you, when you guys first played there, it was okay. It wasn't like you were Still walking into the, the Taj Mahal. No, no, it was a sumo wrestling place. And, which is, you know, and smelled accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like sumo wrestling, you know? Yeah. And, you know, and, uh. But we never saw the outside. We were just shuttled in there in an armored car or something, or a mail truck, I don't know, some metal vehicle with a metal, <laughs> they had no windows, <laughs> sliding around in the back, and okay, you're here. Gee, that was a quick mm, nice. two hours. Well, the traffic was terrible, thanks. Yep. Yeah. Do you guys have particular memories of, of that show? Was there something that stood out about that show uh yeah if you if we recorded two nights it was april 28th and april 30th i think it was 1978 and uh, if you watch the the video that we did and then you hear the album when you did ain't that a shame one night a girl jumped off the balcony onto the stage and ran up and grabbed me i think she was aiming for robin but she grabbed me instead <laughs> and uh it's so the guitar solo was not in there and so then with the other night I don't know how, how, what that, I remember that because I think she broke her leg too. It was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another thing about Budokan that I remember was that just before we went on, we were, uh, had a slated amount of time to play, mm. and uh, the the Japanese are very efficient, you know, and they they studied the set list and they came up to us and said, uh, "Listen, uh, you're short. You need to add another song." So we thought about it for about a second and thought, "Well, let's just put." I want you to want me in there, okay. So we decided to do that. It could have easily not been in the set. It, it had been a hit from the, from the studio album, but that sounded like the biggest wimp. We sounded like the Bay City Rollers on that. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> and so, but the live version was pretty cool. So then uh, they came over with the crying, 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 and all that stuff. That's, yeah. that's not a, an echo machine. That's the actual audience uh, helping us out. Yeah. <laughs> Who? And here, 35 years later, we wish they were here today. So you'd say, <laughs> and as a lot of people always uh, ask me about why I talk the way I do. Well, I was just getting to who, the songs. Who told, yeah, who told you to talk so slowly? My manager told me. Because we fired him very quickly. <laughs> he said, "Now you got to speak clearly and slowly because they don't understand English very well." And so I, <laughs> I felt like a fool when I was. But it, it became something iconic in it's, a funny way. You know? It's it was, perfect. I it, want you to want me. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, yeah. See, they even got it. 